All right, fresh from his latest battle and some war in the 1850s is Kevin <laughs> O'Connor. Your beard, I, it's indescribable. I can't function or think about anything else other than how full and beautiful that thing is. It looks, I, I can't even describe it. I, I really can't. I, what's going on? You're not grooming anymore? You're just going full well, out castaway? Well, I, I, I'm basically going full out castaway, full out pandemic beard here. I, I'm, I do need to groom it. I do need to to blow dry it. So say the beard experts that I watch on YouTube. Um, so that's the next step is getting some of that stuff in with the assistance of my mom, who used to be a hairstylist. Uh, she'll be able to help out with some of that. Give me some tips and tricks. You're so manly. You have so much testosterone. <laughs> you should just you should just be spreading your seed across America. You can have like 700 kids. I don't think gotta- quarantine's the safest time to do that, Bill. <laughs> Uh, uh, speaking of quarantine, you wrote today about a world cup bracket format for the playoffs. So we talked a lot on Sunday's pod with Rosillo about different things I heard that aren't finalized, but I think what they're targeting, right? So to rehash that for people who haven't heard yet, I heard July 25th is when they want the playoffs to start. Hopefully, uh, September 20th would be the last day of the NBA finals. Hopefully, September 25th range would be the NBA draft, either that Thursday or Friday, hopefully. And then October 1st, free agency. The part that they have not been able to figure out yet, and I know that we're taping this on a Tuesday, and who knows if they figured it out by the time, it might have happened by the time we tape this until people hear it. They have not figured out the part, what the regular season will look like what the kind of preliminary part of the playoffs will look like. Mark Cuban, there was an article today on the uh, on the internets by Tim McMahon about Mark Cuban wanted to do basically the old entertaining as hell basketball tournament idea (laughs) for the last two seeds, bump out 29 and 30, get rid of them. The Knicks and the Warriors have 13 through 28, have some sort of tournament for the seven, eight seeds. Um, Let's start there before we get into your world cup idea. How many different ideas have you heard for what they would do with this little abbreviated regular season slash first round play in whatever the fuck this is? Too many to count. That's for sure. I mean, going back to March, it's been an endless amount of different ideas that the league can end up using for the postseason or the resumption of the regular season. And, you know, Mark Cuban's idea, which was basically all 30 teams come back to play and they play anywhere between five to seven games then you would have the play-in tournament in each conference with the seven and eight seeds against the nine and 10 seeds. So that could be done in a different number of different ways where like it's double elimination or it could be like a mini three game series. There's different variations, but you know, there seems to be a lot of support in a, in, in terms of having an idea like that, a Cuban like yep. idea. Um, and it wouldn't shock me if that's what ends up happening. And then we have our typical seven game series starting in the first round. Um, Which I think they want by July 25th is what I keep hearing. That's like kind of the drop dead. We probably can't go further than that date date. It's like mid late July. Like you said, July 25th is probably that last date because you only have a certain amount of time that you're going to be playing games. And one of the points being raised to me consistently over the last month is for the NBA, for the Players Association and for the teams, they need to figure out what is the best way to use our time. Is it having, you know, a Golden State versus Cleveland game? Is is it like getting those players their paychecks? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Uh, But there are a lot of people within the league who say because of the amount of money that come from the national television contracts in the postseason, that that would actually be the more advantageous route to pursue. Whereas if you start with the regular season with all 30 teams, and if something goes wrong, if you need to delay for a couple days or for a week and you get to cut some more games... That could be coming from the postseason instead. There's a lot of challenges that need to be balanced here for the NBA, and I like Cuban's idea overall, but one of the things he said in that article that I don't really understand is he said the group stage idea, which we'll get into, devalues the regular season. I don't see how installing a play-in tournament that would give the Knicks, the Cavs, the Pistons a chance to make the postseason doesn't devalue the regular season. To me, that that's a separate issue. Uh, but I don't see how you can say that about the group stage world cup style group stage, but not about the playing tournament that allows some of these really bad teams to actually get into the playing tournament. The other interesting thing about Cuban weighing in and potentially jeopardizing his Mavericks who are a seven seed, but yeah. they're like 10 games ahead of the nine seed. So 
for him to say, oh, we should do this. And it actually is a disadvantage to his own team. I thought was interesting. The other thing that came out today, you know, Dame Lower talked to Chris Haynes and he said how he's not coming back if it's meaningless, if it's not worth anything. He threw out, look, if we have a plan with the seven through 12 seeds and we have a chance to actually do it, then I'm in. What I thought was interesting, we know that he was one of the 10 guys on that phone call with all the superstars, right? Which was two weeks ago. And this that was the tipping point for when this shifted. And this started to become real. Once the superstars got involved, we know he's one of the superstars. I had heard, and I mentioned this in one of last week's pods about one of the scenarios was dump the final three teams in each conference and basically have 24. And the way that would work, as we explained on Sunday's pod, is some sort of 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for the last two spots. And I'd heard that pretty convincingly from a couple of people. I thought it was interesting that he brought it up because mm -hmm. he is one of the influential guys. It gives him a chance to actually potentially make the playoffs. And I, I think part of what you'd want to do with whatever playoff system you come up with is limit the amount of teams and players in this tournament. So if we have to get rid of six teams, that's a hundred, you know, hundred or so players and coaches and everybody else that are just removed from, from the campus, which I think is ultimately a good thing. Do you think that's the best idea before we get to the world cup that if we're going to do a play in that, that knocking out the bottom six, seven through 12, some sort of plan for those last two seeds. Do you think that would work? I mean, it's a good plan. I don't think it's the best plan. I, I tend to favor the group stage plan. And, and one thing I want to go back to that you did say is you mentioned how for Cuban to suggest that would be not the best thing for Dallas. That's not necessarily true. They're only a game and a half back from Houston and Oklahoma City. So they could actually move up in the standings too. If, if they play a couple extra games. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're like, right. Like, you're it, right. it could turn out that OKC or Houston ends up in that seven spot instead. Okay. All right. So explain the World Cup thing to our listeners. All right. So the World Cup style group stage was proposed by the NBA last week in their GM survey. And, and basically, it could be 20 teams enter the postseason, the top 20 records. So that would include the next four teams in the West, Portland, New Orleans, San Antonio, Sacramento. And, and that's nobody in the East because the, the be, next four yes. non-playoff teams, all the best teams are in the West. Washington's five and a half back and they're, they have a worse record than those other teams. So it'll be the top 20 teams that get slotted into five tiers. You would take the top four teams and work in descending order by record or some other way, but this is the most logical way. So the top four tiers would be Bucks, you know, Raptors in the East and then Lakers and Clippers in the West. They would be the, the top tier teams. And then from there, you would have teams randomly drawn from the remaining tiers in order to create groups, groups of so five teams. So wait a second, though. You're throwing away conferences now with this idea. This throwing 20 teams, conferences. conferences are out. Yes, conferences are out in this suggestion. And from what I understand, this is probably the one of the only ways that we'll see no conferences. Uh, uh, it seems like with a playoff bracket, it would keep with the current conferences as is. So with this, you would get rid of conferences. You would have teams playing each other team in its own group twice. So every team would play a total of eight games and the team, the top two teams from those groups would move on into the second round of the playoffs and a tiebreaker would still val uh, favor the teams with the better regular season record. If the two teams finish four and four, the bucks and let's just say the Kings, if that were to happen, the bucks would advance because they have well, a better hold on with record. that for a second. How funny would the tiebreaker be? <laughs> just that alone it, it, where he, I know <laughs> like what a great way for the Kings to get knocked out of the playoffs. Cause they lost the tiebreaker to somebody else, even though they had the same record. Uh, I, I want to ask you first though, Bill, do you like this idea? Do you like the, the group? Stage? Well, so there's two separate things going on here. One is that eliminating the conferences is its own really fun idea that mm -hmm. I think if you're ever going to try this and I think, I think they're looking at a lot of this quarantine stuff as a chance to reset things that maybe they had always kind of wanted to change, yeah. including starting the season on Christmas day. Um, whether it made sense to have conferences for the playoffs and stuff like that. So by eliminating the conferences, assuming there wasn't an uproar for it <laughs> and assuming it just had more unpredictability and all that stuff, it, it could be a way for them to dip their foot into that. 
I've always thought it was a good idea. I always liked the idea of just one through 16, more, more random. The fact that these teams can, you know, during non-quarantine times, they can hop in a charter plane and fly wherever. It's not like it was in the eighties where they're flying coach. Um, I just Still thought a concern it was, the teams do have with conferenceless games in the future, but at least you well, can test it out, you know, see how fans react now. Because the thing that would suck is if you're the Celtics and you're a five seed and you're playing Portland, they're a 12 seed and you have to fly yeah. to Portland for games three and four and then game six. And that's 3,100 miles or whatever it is. That would suck. It's a big sure. difference between that and Philly. But um, so it, anyway, for that first part, eliminating the conferences if you're ever going to do it, this is the year. And I actually kind of like it. I, 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 I got excited reading your piece about it. The second piece, the 20 teams that solves two problems, right? We don't care about anybody in the East. Who's not a playoff team. All those teams yeah. are DOA. We it's don't, like, we don't sorry, need to create sorry, Washington. It's like, yeah, we want to make a push, but you know, five and a half back, the odds are with a month remaining. It's so slim that Washington sorry, Nick. It... Yeah. Sorry. And that's the that's my problem with Mark Cuban's idea. You you want to say that you know the group stage devalues the regular season, makes it irrelevant, but you're telling me it's fair for the Knicks, for the Cavs, or the Hawks to get into the postseason. This the group stage idea to me, it is a larger change on paper, but it retains the value of what the season was in terms of that you're only allowing the teams that actually had a shot to have a chance. In the postseason, you're only putting those four teams that are on the bubble in the West in it. That's it. Well, and the thing that I don't love is a team like the Celtics, right? So the, are the Celtics the cutoff team? Who's the fifth team? The Celtics? They would be in the second tier. And yes, they would be the, the fifth who, team. Who Are they the fifth best team though? Yeah. Or is somebody yeah, from the for West? By record, yes. By record. Right. So they could potentially get screwed with that. And they're, I don't know, a game behind Toronto game and a half, something like that. It would make more sense to me to have the top. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a Celtics fan, although maybe 10%. It would make more sense to me to have <laughs> maybe the top, 70%. <laughs> well, it would make more sense for, and I also think the number one seed should get rewarded a little more, right? The lake, uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee so if you in, had, in LA, yeah. if you had one through eight and you had five is with the, the fourth best team. So the, the fourth group, and you, who's the fourth team right now? In the East? Or no, just overall? in general. Who's the number four overall the, team? The, the Clippers right now. Right. So if it was Boston is five, Clippers are four, they're the top two teams in the fourth group. And then it descends so that the Lakers group has the seventh best team and Milwaukee's group has the eighth best team. And I don't you think, could do that. You could yeah, I, th that I would though. rather see that and then have a lottery for the other 12 teams. And, and for what it's worth, I mean, the way this was structured within my article is just one variation of what you could use. I just yeah. mentioned how it could be a random draw. That's what the World Cup does. That's what the Champions League does. That's what a lot of soccer leagues around the world do. But you could have the top seeds drafts. You could have the Lakers select their teams within their own group. Because oh, that would be that. I mean, you know, I love that that because that yeah, ends up I mean, with a lot of it, it, lot of Twitter the most, muscles. It's the most Bill Simmons idea possible. Oh. <laughs> it wouldn't happen. You want uh, us now? You got us. <laughs> it's a lot of that on Twitter for the oh, next. I mean, four talk days. about talk about making rivalries, huh? Uh, yeah. But you could do that, or you could do as you suggested that those top seeds get one of the bottom teams for sure. Right. That that to me would be a fair thing to do to incentivize these top teams to approve that. But I, I would say to these top teams, you know, if the Bucks went to Adam Silver and be like, we understand you like this idea, but we're not in favor of it. It screws us. We want the one eight matchup that we strove to have during the regular season as the one seed winning 53 games with only 12 losses. It's like, I get that. But you still are the favorites within your own group, regardless of how it shakes out. And also because you have the best regular season record you would have the advantage and a tiebreaker. Not to mention that for this situation, what is good for the overall league also benefits you as well. Maybe there's a short-term hit here, but if this is a hit for the league, every team playing eight games, which would be a total of 80 games, 80 games over two and a half, three weeks, however long it would take, that to me, I mean of the people I've talked to within the league office from teams, when they remove their own bias from their own team situation, whether they're a good team or a bad team, 
everybody says from a fan perspective that they would be in favor of this. And the response to my article today, I was shocked at the amount of people who really, really liked the idea. Even Chris Vernon liked the idea. And like we didn't disagree at all on the whole podcast. People dig this idea. And if I'm the NBA, I understand that what March Madness has, what these group stages have for the World Cup and other leagues. Adam knows. He's talked about how he's jealous of certain aspects of soccer globally. Uh, the NBA can capture some of that with a format like this, with games being played every day that are must-win, that matter, that are high-intensity, that mean something. For a casual fan, that's going to draw you in. Whereas if you have a 1-8 to eight series between the Bucks and the Magic, I'm sorry. Most people do not care about that because you're locked into Bucks Magic for a week and a half. Maybe you get a game five, but that's only mildly interesting for a casual fan. Maybe not hardcore fans, lifelong fans like you and me, Bill, and plenty of people listening to this pod. But for the casual fan, they don't care. But a group stage is something where you maybe get a bad matchup twice for one team, but the other six are compelling and interesting and intense and actually mean something. I mean, to me, it's like a, a no-brainer from a fan perspective. And as I said earlier, from a league perspective, it retains what met, happened in the regular season by taking the best teams, and it creates an environment here that doesn't make things ex especially unfair for any team in particular. Well, you get to dump 10 teams yep. out of it too. completely, safer. so that's yep. much safer. Yep. I think if, I don't like the lottery idea, even though Conspiracy Bill loves it, because Conspiracy Bill would just be like, get the fuck out of here. How'd, how'd they end up with all these perfect matchups? Come on. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, my God, Portland and Oklahoma City just randomly ended up in the same group. I can't believe that happened. It, it, uh, it's like Adam Silver at home with like bowls, you know, you'd be oh, it's like pro wrestling. Fr frozen envelope. Yeah, frozen yeah. envelope. He's like, all right, all I got to get Dame Lillard and Russell Westbrook <laughs> against each other for two games. Lock that down. And you uh, got to get the Pelicans with the Lakers, too. Right? Oh, yeah. You got to do all that stuff. But I think if they did, if they if they locked in the top eight teams the way we said, where it's like one and eight are together, two and seven, three and six, and four and five. And then for those last 12 teams, you go snake fashion, but you start with the fourth group. Mm -hmm. Because I think you want to give as much of a cushion to the top two teams as you can because they earned it because that's the whole point of the regular season. So you lock down all those teams. Then instead of the lottery, I would have the nine seed, whoever the ninth best team is, that's in the group with four or five. So now that's like a murderer's row group, unfortunately for the four or five teams, but that's just the way it goes. You didn't win your league. And then 10 is in the third group, 11's in the fourth group, 12's in the, in, I'm sorry, 12's in the Milwaukee group. So Milwaukee would be going against one, eight and 12, and then 13, and then 20. So Milwaukee's one, eight, 12, 13, 20. And you just go that way. And then, you know, they, they are properly rewarded. And if they can't get out of, if they can't get one of the first top two seeds with one, eight, uh, 12, 13, 20, then you don't fucking deserve to advance in the playoffs mm -hmm. anyway. Right. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, and like I said, with two teams coming out of each group out of five, five teams, one group, two teams get out and to move into the top eight, the second round of the playoffs, Milwaukee's probably getting through. Lakers are probably getting through. I mean, the Clippers, these top teams are still the favorites, still heavy favorites. All right. So you said yeah. OKC is the ninth team. So you'd have group four potentially would have the Clippers, the Celtics, and OKC as four, five, and nine. That's a fucking gauntlet. Yeah. Jesus. Just just to throw it out there, like within the article, the the tiers that I outlined is descending order of record. So tier one would be Bucks, Lakers, Raptors, Clippers, two, Celtics, Nuggets, Jazz, Heat, three, Thunder, Rockets, Pacers, Sixers, four, Mavericks, Grizzlies, Nets, Magic, five, Blazers, Pelicans, Kings, Spurs. I would argue, So maybe that's the way to do it. You do snake fa snake fashion for the first yeah, four rounds. It, and that's something that was mentioned to me as a way to possibly do it. Uh, that but that last fashion. round should be should go backwards so that the 20th team should be with the Bucks. Sure, yeah. Which would be the Spurs in this case. So I mean, if you it, did it, it, if you did snake fashion one through eight, and that night team was in the Bucks thing, and you got Milwaukee and OKC in the same bracket, that's a better idea than mine. I th I think that works better. 
Because that having four, five, and nine in one bracket is is too stacked. Yeah, I mean, I I I have a, a Google Sheets doc with like twenty different variations of this, and like there's situations in which if you do a random draw, a team gets screwed. You could end up with a situation where a team gets the Celtics, the Rockets, the Mavericks, and the Pelicans. Maybe right. the Bucks end up with that, and that's really not fair. That's what soccer fans call a group of death with the World Cup. That's something you do want to avoid, which is maybe where the snake draft situation makes sense or maybe something that your suggestion suggesting makes more sense. But for the most part, most of the ways you shake this out, whether it's random draw or snake draft, are pretty even between each group that would actually be competing amongst each other. And uh, with all the benefits that would come from the interest and to something new for the fans, the benefits from a competitive standpoint, if I'm the NBA, I mean, they are clearly considering it. We know they're considering it. It was part of the GM survey. And I've heard that there's a lot of, you know, support within the league office for this. It's really just a matter of, of the players sign off on it. And more importantly, in terms of approval from the NBA perspective, is if the team owners are willing to do this. And clearly one of them, Mark Cuban, is not. Um, but there are others that certainly are. You know, Daryl Morey has crunched all of the odds and variables to <laughs> yeah. figure out what's like the optimum thing. And he'll be recommending that yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at Houston, Houston's 10 Philly is 12. So potentially if you did it the way we just talked about where it's four and five together, and then it would be 12 mm -hmm. and 13. That could be <laughs> Jesus. That could be Celtics, Clippers, Philly, and Dallas all in one group. So that would be the group of death, right? Oh, you'd yeah, have, yeah, yep, yep. You'd have four the of the of top yeah. 13 teams in yeah. one group. Yeah. God, that would suck. Yeah, now now yeah. I'm voting for your mm -hmm. lottery idea. Because there's a <laughs> drop-off once you get once you get past Dallas, which is the 13th team, the last seven are Memphis, Brooklyn, Orlando, Portland, New Orleans, Sacramento. And is San Antonio in there? It is, right? Yeah, San Antonio, yeah. Yep. So the fucking Spurs make it. Mm. you know they'll figure out something. Yep, Popovich will come with some game plan. DeMar DeRozan will suddenly start be shooting threes. But this is like the thing that's exciting though about it. If you go like in one day you have LeBron James against Pelicans, up and coming team versus the, one of the favorites in the West. Then later in the day, you got Houston going against Milwaukee. And then two days later, Milwaukee has to go against Damian Lillard from a... a from a fan standpoint, I can't imagine how exciting it would be to watch these games day to day while discussing how teams are going to adapt with all these drastically different type of styles teams are playing. Uh, I mean, I, I, I get excited thinking about it. I, once I it's saw wonderful. Friday morning. Yeah, it's K great. KOC, this is the second best thing you've done other than help win that <laughs> war in 1852. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got the When you attacked the uh, yeah, enemy yeah. in the river, I thought yeah, that yeah. was brilliant. I think it's this is brilliant. Moment. So what Problem. are we calling this? Last thing. We'll call it like the uh, basketball cup? World I mean, cup maybe for... The, maybe the Stern are we just cup. calling it why world the, cup? Why not the Stern Cup? I think that that's solid. I'm, I'm nodding. People can't see me nodding. I thought Stern um, kind of got the kind of got overlooked in 2020 for some very under, understandable reasons, right? Kobe dies mm -hmm. four weeks after he does three, three and a half weeks after. And then we have this terrible pandemic and all this stuff. And I think that would be a good way to honor him. And you know what, with this type of thing, you could continue to honor him moving forward. Cause if this is a hit, if people love it, this could be and turned up, turn out being your mid season tournament in the future. This could be something that Adam Silver has always wanted was some sort of in-season tournament. And if this is a big hit, people love it. Just take this and plant it in the middle of the regular season and future seasons. You always have the Stern Cup midway through where teams compete in, the, you know, 10 teams, whatever the new format would look like. And, you know, fans would already love it because of what happened in the summer of 2020. It's a what about the Spotify experiment. Cup? <laughs> hey, I mean, maybe if they're looking for a $100 sponsor, million dollar right? check? <laughs> I mean, if they want to make money back, honestly, they should they they should sell a presenting sponsor, and that should be the cup, right? Spotify yeah, yeah, cup, ZipRecruiter cup. Work? Would, yeah. would Spotify need the name in front, or could it be Stern Cup presented by Spotify? I, I think we'd want the Spotify cup. <laughs> I'll make some calls. Yeah, let's make it happen. <laughs> no, but though. I mean, honestly, I do think 
I do think if they wanted to recoup some recoup some money, yeah, having a sponsor own the cup makes a lot of sense. And if oh, you're no a sponsor, it. and it's called the Amazon Cup, it would have to be one of the companies that's still doing well. You call it like mm -hmm. the Netflix Cup or whatever. Um, that's pretty good advertising. No doubt Just, about it. A lot of people are going to be watching. Ratings are up on sports across the board. Super Bowl commercials like five million. Believe so. You so figure yeah. it's like ten Super Bowl commercials. Basically, you call it the whatever. Mm -hmm. It's fifty million to get it. Is it? Is it ten? I mean, Super Bowl gets a heck of a lot of viewers compared True. to NBA. The totality, games, but, of but this you're getting stuff. more. Yeah, you're getting more total games. Yeah, six million people watch Tom Brady and Peyton Manning play golf with Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson. I think we should be prepared for any sort of <laughs> rate record uh, rating thing for this. KOC, it's wonderful to see you. You've never looked better. I'm really proud of your beard. Uh, congrats on this World Cup thing, and I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Bill. Have a good day. All right. You too.